Hello everyone, my name is Don and welcome aboard. We're heading into the back lot of Disney's Hollywood Studios. This production area was built in 1988 as a Florida counterpart to the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. We included sound stages, recording studios, high-tech editing rooms, all the tools needed to create movies, TV shows, and radio broadcasts. We've even got our very own water tower, too. It's up ahead on the left side of our shuttle. We call it the Earful Tower. It's inspired by the water tower Walt Disney had built for his Burbank studio in 1939. Our Florida tower stands a lucky 13 stories high, and we added our own creative touch, a giant set of Mickey Mouse ears. If you wanted to wear those ears, you'd have to have a hat size of 342 and 3 eighths. Up ahead, after the next bend in the road, you'll have a perfect opportunity to take a picture of this famous icon. In the world of entertainment, every project starts with a screenplay and a lot of creative ideas. A production studio is where the ideas of writers, producers, and directors are transformed into an on-screen reality. Within these huge spaces, filmmakers can literally create their own worlds. Our Florida sound stages are soundproof, weatherproof, and most importantly, air-conditioned. All vitally important for the cast, crew, and equipment. Many of the crafts needed for filmmaking are located right here on the lot. On the left, we have our own greens department. It grows flowers, trees, shrubs, and topiaries. A few well-placed plants can cover up empty spots in the set and add a touch of natural beauty to a scene. On the right are two of the aircraft from the 2001 blockbuster hit Pearl Harbor. These exact full-scale replicas of P-40 fighters were used in the special effect fight sequences. Of course, many of the planes you saw flying through the aerial battles or sitting on the ground weren't real at all. They were created entirely within a computer. Oh, keep your cameras focused to the right. We're coming up on that perfect angle of the Earful Tower I told you about. It's a true masterpiece. We're entering one of our most glamorous and colorful departments, creative costuming. Every star has to have just the right wardrobe, and it all begins here with a designer's sketch. Our team of designers, seamstresses, and tailors can turn one and a half million yards of fabric into over 25,000 costumes every year. Many of these costumes will become part of the shows and attractions of the Walt Disney World Resort. In fact, here in Florida, we have the largest working wardrobe department in the world. Why, Mickey Mouse alone has over 175 different outfits to choose from, while Minnie Mouse keeps more than 200 unique costumes in her wardrobe. On the left are costumes worn by the stars in recent studio productions. You'll probably recognize some of those costumes from the big screen. Every story needs a setting, and our design staff can create just about any place a script calls for, from an urban city street to a remote desert canyon. On the left is our scenic shop where large-scale sets and props are built. Our team of set designers, carpenters, artists, and engineers has created caves and caverns, game show sets, even replicas of the U.S. Supreme Court, and NASA's Mission Control, all on our sound stages. The shop also provides sets and props for our shows and parades here at Walt Disney World. The same skill and craftsmanship that goes into a movie set can also be used to create magic for our parks. Either way, it's all about making dreams come true. Now we're entering a zone we call the Bone Yard. It's an outdoor storage area for oversized props and vehicles. Cars, trucks, boats, planes, we often save these props in case we need them for future productions. In this backlot collection, you may find real working vehicles, non-working mock-ups, and even large-scale miniatures used in special effects shots. Large-scale models create a more convincing illusion on camera. We're 
now passing by the sets for our lights, motors, action, extreme stunt show. On the left, you may catch a glimpse of the Mediterranean fishing village that sets the stage for this thrilling attraction. We'll get a closer look at it soon, but for now, we're approaching one of the largest standing sets on our back lot. It's over on the right. It may not look like much from this angle, but it's pretty spectacular on the other side.
Okay, well, thanks, Amy, for giving us access to the set. On the right, we have an authentic piece of Disney history. That Gulfstream 1 was known at airports across the country as November 234 Mickey Mouse, but we just call it the Mouse. In 1964, Walt Disney and his hand-picked team used this plane to scout locations for what he called the Florida Project. Soon, they secretly began purchasing thousands of acres of land, which became the Walt Disney World Resort in 1971. During the creation of the resort and later Epcot, the Mouse shuttled studio executives and Imagineers between Burbank and Orlando, making it the most used executive aircraft in the country. Appropriately, the Mouse retired here in 1992. As Walt used to say, it was all started by a Mouse. In this case, the 234 Mickey Mouse. On our right, we once again sweep past the magnificent Mediterranean village of our lights, motors, action, extreme stunt show. This high-octane attraction is based on the hit show from the Walt Disney Studios Park in France. In this action-packed production, you'll feel like you're right there on the set during the filming of a spy thriller, complete with custom-built cars, motorcycles, even jet skis. You'll experience the split-second timing, coordinated driving, and fiery special effects that make action movies a real blast. The staging area to our right is known as Acceleration Alley. Here, the custom-built stunt show vehicles rev their engines up to 70 miles an hour before making their high-speed entrances onto the stage for our lights, motors, action, extreme stunt show. Of course, these are professional stunt drivers. We hope you'll enjoy their daring driving skills, but please, don't try them yourself. On the left, we've reached our second boneyard with more historic props and vehicles. When we reuse older props in a new production, they're often refitted with custom parts and given a whole new color scheme. You might not even recognize them the next time you see them on screen. For instance, coming up is our friend Herbie the Love Bug. He went through a special demolition derby makeover. Those dents and dings were added on purpose, but he can be polished up as good as new for his next starring role. On our right, we now have a very different view of the fishing village set. From this point of view, you can see that there is no inside of the buildings. They are just false fronts or facades. In the movie business, set builders only create what the camera has to see. It's an old movie trick dating all the way back to the silent era. To add to the sense of realism and avoid the cost of set building, many of today's television shows and movies film on location in cities and towns across the U.S. But out in the real world, you've got to contend with noise, traffic, crowds, and various visual elements that may or may not belong in your film. Here on the back lot, we can avoid these problems because we created our very own flexible urban environment. Our Streets of America facades can stand in for a small town or a giant metropolis. As we come around the last corner on our route, you'll see the skyline of New York City in the distance. It's really a series of painted flats expertly designed to fool the eye and the camera. We can dress and decorate these streets to look like any city we want from Chicago to San Francisco. Depending on the choice of vehicles, props, and costumes, we can even turn back the clock and set our story in a different time. And what's more, these sets are built with Florida weather in mind. They're made to withstand 100 mile an hour winds. You're welcome to visit our streets of America anytime during your visit today and get an up close look at the skills of our set designers and builders. We've just about reached the end of our tour. Our final stop is the American Film Institute Showcase where you can see the actual costumes and movie props used in some of Hollywood's most famous films. There are some pretty amazing items in there, so feel free to take all the time you like. Please stay seated until our tram comes to a complete stop and check around you for any personal